Imagine a world where the mere mention of one man struck fear into the hearts of Europe's mightiest rulers, a name that even now is known throughout the world. Join us as we unearth long-buried secrets, decode cryptic battlefield strategies, and explore what went wrong for Napoleon at the Battle of Waterloo. Did Napoleon's arrogance blind him to the winds of change? Was the outcome of Waterloo inevitable, or could a different choice have altered the course of history? What happened on that blood-soaked field that turned triumph into tragedy? How did Napoleon, the indomitable force, meet his match? As we navigate through the fog of war, we invite you to embark on a journey of discovery. What unseen forces were at play? Who were the unsung heroes and the tragic casualties of this colossal clash? From the pinnacle of triumph to the depths of tragedy, the Battle of Waterloo is more than a historical event. It's a canvas painted with the vivid hues of humanity's struggle for power, pride and perseverance. This is the story of the Battle of Waterloo and Napoleon's downfall. In the summer of 1815, a lush field in present-day Belgium would become the stage for one of the most pivotal and decisive battles in history. A clash of nations, power and destiny. To truly understand the Battle of Waterloo, we must first delve into the complex web of European politics and power struggles that led to this historic confrontation. As the Napoleonic era drew to a close, tensions between the major European powers were reaching a boiling point. Napoleon Bonaparte, once the Emperor of the French, had escaped from exile and returned to reclaim his throne. On the 13th of March, 1815, six days before Napoleon arrived in Paris, he was officially declared an outlaw by the powers convening at the Congress of Vienna. In response, just four days later, the United Kingdom, Russia, Austria and Prussia swiftly mobilised their armies with the aim of defeating Napoleon. Recognising the critical imbalance in forces, Napoleon understood that, following the unsuccessful attempts to dissuade any member of the Seventh Coalition from invading France, his sole opportunity to retain power lay in launching a preemptive attack before the Coalition could fully assemble. By June, Napoleon had mustered an army numbering approximately 300,000 soldiers. However, when he faced the Allied troops, the available force was markedly smaller, comprising less than one-third of that number. Despite this, the majority of the enlisted men remained both loyal and seasoned in battle. Napoleon strategically organised his forces, creating a left wing led by Marshal Ney, a right wing commanded by Marshal Grouchy, and a reserve personally under his command. The forces were set. On one side, Napoleon Bonaparte, a military genius seeking to reclaim his former glory. On the other, a coalition of European powers, the Prussians commanded by Field Marshal Gebhard von Blücher and an Anglo-Allied force led by Field Marshal the Duke of Wellington. A considerable portion of the troops within the coalition armies possessed limited battlefield experience. The Dutch army had undergone reconstitution in 1815 after Napoleon's earlier defeat. Apart from the British contingent and select units from Hanover and Brunswick, which had previously fought alongside the British in Spain, Numerous professional soldiers within the coalition ranks had served time in the French army or allied forces connected to the Napoleonic regime. Additionally, Wellington faced a notable shortage of heavy cavalry, with merely seven British regiments and three Dutch regiments at his disposal. As the sun set on June 17, 1815, both armies prepared for a showdown that would determine the fate of Europe. The Battle of Waterloo was on the horizon. Wellington strategically selected a formidable position at Waterloo. This location comprised an extensive ridge extending from east to west, intersected by the main road to Brussels. Meanwhile, the French army positioned themselves on the slopes of a separate ridge to the south. Due to the terrain, Napoleon was unable to directly observe Wellington's formations. 
Consequently, he organized his forces symmetrically on either side of the Brussels road. The battle commenced on June 18th with the fate of empires hanging in the balance. Troops clashed, cannons roared, and the once serene landscape of Waterloo transformed into a theater of death and glory. Napoleon devised a straightforward strategy. Initially, he planned a diversionary assault on the Chateau of Hougoumont to draw Wellington's attention and force the dispatch of reinforcements to that location. Subsequently, with Wellington's forces redirected, Napoleon intended to launch the primary attack against the main body of the Anglo-Allied army. The French forces launched their first assault. However, they faced a relentless counter-offensive from the robust British artillery, compelling them to retreat. The skirmish persisted throughout the afternoon. Hougoumont witnessed a concentrated presence of French light infantry, executing coordinated attacks against the troops positioned behind the structure. Despite the intense engagement, Wellington's army successfully defended both the house and the northward running hollow way. In a strategic move during the afternoon, Napoleon personally ordered the shelling of the house. As a result, all structures except for the chapel were obliterated in the fiery destruction. In the early evening, the Prussian forces arrived on Napoleon's right flank, compelling him to divert additional troops to stabilize the situation. Around 6 p.m., the French successfully seized La Haye Sante, a farmhouse in the center of the Allied line. This dealt a significant blow to Wellington's position. Facing intense enemy fire, the center of Wellington's forces started to crumble. In response, Ney urgently requested reinforcements to exploit their position. However, Napoleon opted to prioritize sending troops to reclaim the village of Pansanoid from the Prussians. This strategic decision inadvertently granted Wellington valuable time to fortify and reinforce his position. Around 7 p.m. in a final attempt to secure victory, Napoleon deployed his elite forces, the Imperial Guard. Striding confidently up the ridge, positioned between Hougoumont and La Haye Sainte, they, unfortunately, chose to assault the very point where Wellington's defences were strongest. The Imperial Guard, met with a relentless barrage from British guardsmen and light infantry, came to a standstill, faltered and eventually crumbled. The defeat of the Imperial Guard triggered a wave of panic among the remaining French forces, compelling them to retreat. Throughout the night, the French found themselves relentlessly pursued by the Prussian cavalry. Napoleon, grappling with the loss, saw nearly 40,000 of his men either killed, wounded or captured, while the Allies suffered 22,000 casualties. Napoleon's aspirations of victory were shattered. Though he contemplated pressing on with the fight, the harsh reality forced him to abdicate when the Allies triumphantly entered Paris on July 7th. The Battle of Waterloo signified the end of Napoleon's Hundred Days comeback from exile. This pivotal event triggered Napoleon's definitive and second abdication as the Emperor of the French, ultimately bringing an end to the First French Empire. It served as a significant historical landmark, ushering in decades of relative peace. Napoleon found himself banished to the distant South Atlantic island of St. Helena, arriving on October 25th, 1815, accompanied by only a small group of steadfast supporters. Within six years, he was dead. If you've enjoyed this exploration, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more captivating history and ring that notification bell so you never miss a video. Until next time, where we'll be diving into the pages of history once more.